Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Kai from Kai's Creations and Crazy with Kai. Um, if you're new to my channel, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Leave me a comment. It helps YouTube notice me just a little bit more. And if you'd like to see more, I do primarily Dollar Tree DIYs, Dollar Tree Hauls from Post Falls, uh, Idaho and Coeur d'Alene area. And I also do Munchy Mondays where I review snacks from the Dollar Tree. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. And if you'd like to see more videos like that, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell when it pops up so you'll never miss a video. So tonight, I'm up late. Been kind of manic lately. Been kind of overwhelmed with work and a bunch of stuff. And so I put aside some major organizing in my room I've been doing. And I've got messes everywhere. I'm kind of a mess myself. Um, hence the crazy hair. Um, and I look like crap. <laughs> so you'll have to forgive me. I was going to do a video tonight showcasing um, something I made with these little popcorn things from Dollar Tree. But I got sidetracked by a comment on one of my groups on Facebook. So the group is twisted and frugal dollar store crafts so again that's twisted and frugal dollar store crafts sorry there's something on my screen that is bothering me um they're a great group uh women from all over the united states i think there's even some women from canada and other countries in there um but um i think i don't know but primarily dollar store crafts and I tell you what some of those women have the best ideas you can pretty much post any item you find at Dollar Tree and be like what can I do with this and you'll get 50 ideas almost instantly so I really love that group but tonight a woman was asking about um, a little wooden project she was making with the little wooden blocks the Jenga blocks and some little wooden letters and she had a little cross on there um, and we were we started talking uh, her name is Stacy sorry if I'm going to butcher your last name, but Stacy Yatsko, and um, I was talking to her about paints, and you, different paints that look good together, you know, like she could paint the blocks brown, and the letters antique white, or an off-white, or an eggshell white, or the opposite, paint the blocks an antique white, or something like that, and then the letters a brown, so what I was telling her, in sparked me to start working on another project yeah i know i've got like 50 projects going at once you guys it's crazy um i'm all over the place this week but i figured i'll go ahead and throw that in this video too because i needed to work on that project so this was um a dollar store frame is a dollar store frame um it was gold and i'm not a big gold person anyway but that was the best i could find and these frames tend to be either very, very cheap wood or plastic. Um, I think this one was like a cheap wood. So you can paint these, but it's good to sand them down first. And you have to be really careful when you're sanding them because these frames are cheap and they will come apart really easily. Like literally they break so easily, you guys. So be careful when you're sanding, but you know, put them on a flat surface. Here, I'll put you down here. You guys like my new sign, by the way. I've been remodeling my room, so my desk is a mess again. <laughs> but I have new stuff up in my room, and that's just a little part of my room that I've gotten done. But don't mind this. This is going to go away next week or this weekend. Um, but anyways, so let me put you down here so you can see. So it was gold i put it on a flat surface and i sanded it a little bit with sandpaper scratched it up then i painted it with this is the paint i was mentioning to you stacy waverly antique wax that brown you can use this as a paint or you can use it as a as a stain if you like if you put it on the wood and before it's totally dry wipe it off it acts as a stain um, and it works really nicely. I think these are at Walmart about $8 a bottle. 
I'm not really sure. I think it was around $8 a bottle. It's a little expensive, but if you're sparingly with them, they'll last you a long time. And I really love Waverly chalk paints. Um, that's one of my favorite colors as well. So I painted it with that. And then, like I was telling you about the, if you want to go a cheaper route, Apple Barrel for 50 cents at Walmart. This is my favorite brown um, in that brand. Uh, a nutmeg brown and then my favorite white to use is the antique white because it's a nice eggshell kind of off-white um, almost beige and so what I've done is I painted it with the brown and then I let it dry um, and when I'm impatient I use a hair dryer <laughs> and dry it really fast you guys but anyways so and then I dry brush um, over that, I'm using the wrong brush, sorry, I dry brush over that with the antique white. So dry brushing, if you don't know, is just that. You just get, you don't get your brush wet with water, and you just get a little tiny bit of paint, and even kind of wipe it off on the side of your paint thing, or cardboard, or whatever you're using, and then you just lightly brush on little strokes here and there and like see how this frame has the little dots in the middle I don't know if you can see that I like going over the dots and then you can see the dots better um, so I'm just gonna lightly do that for a second and I've done it on the other sides already as you can see but yeah so I just lightly dry brush and then it gives it that kind of aged rustic farmhouse look um, and also, if you want, if you still don't, you know, get your desired effect or say you put too much white on, you can sandpaper that off. You can go over it with brown again. You can go over it with brown and then, you know, the off-white back and forth a few times if you want and just play with it until you get it how you like it. You can rub some sandpaper on it and repaint it again dry brush it again with brown or white until you get how you like it so i like mine like this i think it looks good i'm gonna put a picture of me and my friends in there and then i'm probably gonna glue this little guy together see if i can show you without it falling apart because i haven't glued it yet i just got a little burlap bow with some lace ribbon and these little uh steampunk kind of hearts that i got a big pack of steampunk little buttons and things from walmart and i'm gonna go ahead and put that on the corner after i make this picture so yeah that's that so those are the paints like i said 50 cents for the nutmeg brown and the antique white which they almost always have at walmart in the apple barrel brand and then it's worth it if you want to invest in some waverly chalk paints like i said they're about eight dollars a bottle i think but you might be able to get them cheaper or again with a coupon at michael's or hobby lobby or someplace like that um i would say michael's or drans i don't support hobby lobby but we won't get into that right now <laughs> um but in any case, yeah, they're worth it. They're amazing chalk paints. I've heard about them from other DIYers for ages. And I finally found some at Walmart and was like, oh my gosh, I have to get these. And I'm in love with them already. I only got a few. I think I got a white chalk paint, an elephant, which is a nice gray. Um, a brown. I don't remember the name of the brown. And then this antique wax which is one of my favorite browns i think the other one's chocolate or something but anyways so yeah so i'm gonna set that aside and show you what this video was actually intended for which is these popcorn things i really wanted to encourage you guys to think outside the box and i've been trying to do that myself lately so instead of just um looking in the craft aisle and the garden section, you know, the typical areas us crafters go to at Dollar Tree, I've been looking in other aisles and thinking, well, what could I do with that? What could I do with that? And just kind of trying to think outside the box. So I know like around Christmas time and stuff, I had gotten, they always have these popcorn things or almost always have these popcorn things. Um, they sell them two for a dollar, these ones, this size, or they have um, a big one for a dollar that's like a big square one, maybe about that big. Um, 
I like to get the big ones around Christmas time and fill them with some Dollar Tree movies or movies from other places, some DVDs, and you throw some popcorn and some hot chocolate or whatever in there, and you've got an amazing gift bag or gift package, you know, and you can wrap that all up in plastic. Dollar Tree usually even has the big gift bags, the plastic bag you wrap it in. Um, but anyways, so my friend Linda and I like to get together and have movie nights and we watch the Dollar Tree movies and we pick out different ones each time and see if it's a B movie that really sucks <laughs> or a B movie that is actually kind of cool or funny or once in a blue moon you get a movie that's actually a gem and it's a really good movie. So you gamble buying movies of the Dollar Tree but you know what it's fun and we like to do that. So. I thought it'd be cool to personalize these. So I will tell you, I've already glued on this ribbon. This is actually two ribbons. It's the polka dot one and the thinner one, both of which I believe I got at Dollar Tree um, at different times in the past couple months. But I wanted to get off this popcorn here and personalize it like one say Linda's snacks and one say Kai's snacks. And then um, it could be for not just popcorn. We could put chips in there. We could put, you know, whatever in there. Cookies, you know. I'm just saying, like, if I opened a big bag of something and we're going to share instead of breaking out some bowls, how fun would it be to have our own personalized little snack containers? So, anyways, I was trying to get these off. So I started by using my X-Acto knife, actually a little razor, and scraping off the lettering. And that worked. I mean, I'll show you. It wasn't, it wasn't very fast, but you can see if you start scraping, you know, it does come off pretty easily. But I thought, well, could there be a better way? You know, because I ended up doing this. And then I ended up sandpapering it a little bit. And then I ended up um, using some Goo Gone. Well, in trial and error, I figured out you don't actually really need to scrape it all off with the X-Acto knife or razor. It helps if you scrape some of it off, but you can get the majority of it off with sandpaper just about as fast or faster and it's a little less work on your wrist and your hand and it makes a little bit cleaner area because it sandpapers the whole area smooth and evenly instead of just scratches like this is making and I figured out also that like these things really once I printed them out didn't really show through the popcorn anyway but I'm OCD and I wanted the popcorn to be off there <laughs> so Where's my sandpaper? I will show you. See, that just took most of it off with the scraping. But I was being really OCD about it earlier and taking forever to scrape it all off. When I realized... Now, you do have to be careful if you don't want to sand the other parts. You have to, you know, just get in the circle. But I'll show you. If you sandpaper carefully inside the circle... Look how much faster that's going, you guys, <laughs> than the scraping. And it looks even and nice. You might have to switch up to a different corner of your sandpaper um, if you, you know, if it gets a bunch of paint gob on it or whatever, you know, the red that it's scraping off. But yeah, so I did that until I was satisfied with it getting most of that off let me see come on like that then what I did I don't know if you can see but there is still residue on that it's a little red so then what I did was I got my goo gone I have it in a little spray bottle but the spray bottle hasn't been working lately so that may not have been the best choice I got a little q-tip just dipped it in the goo gone and went ahead and rubbed it around the area where I was sanding and where the, it said popcorn. And I just rubbed that really good for a few minutes. There's like a C over there that I didn't actually get with sandpaper. 
And I should have done this before putting the ribbon on like I did the other one, but that's okay. And then I'll go over it again with the dry part of the, the other end of the Q-tip that's dry. And again, you can see pretty quickly that's turning out to be a nice clear spot where I can glue my thing. So I'm going to do the other side and then I will show you how I put these on. Let me see. What am I doing? Okay, so I'm going to scratch it up just a little bit with this. But yeah, it's fun to walk around if you're bored or, you know, just need some inspiration. Walk around Dollar Tree sometime and look at things that are not typically used for crafts and go grab them and think or think to yourself in the store, what could I do with this? And you might be surprised. You might have an idea and think, oh, wow, actually, I think I know something I could do with that. And then, ba-bam, <laughs> you've invented a new project for yourself. And if you do DIYs on YouTube like I do, you've invented a new project you can share with others. So I think that's pretty cool to think outside the box sometime. Like these ladies came in today, and they were buying these little shoes, little baby plastic baby shoes, not for real babies, but they look like doll shoes. But they were in the party section because they were for um, baby showers. And so they had little, you know, bassinets and little shoes and little battles and little things like that for, I guess, either goodie bags or games or things like that for baby showers. Well, they were buying a whole bunch of them. And I said, are you doing a baby shower? And they said, no, we're making um, gnomes. We're making gnome dolls. And we're using these as the shoes on the bottom. And I thought, oh, my God, that's such a good idea. And I never would have thought of that. So I thought that was cool. So like I said, you know, walk around your Dollar Tree and think outside the box sometime. Or like people that will grab kitchen items like those big strainer splatter cover things. And they'll put a big throw that bow on it and hang it up and use it as an earring holder. I mean, just think outside the box sometime and think, you know, walk around and you'll you'll be surprised what ideas you get. Like I said, these popcorn things, I have been looking at them and selling them where I work at Dollar Tree for months now. And I see them all the time and I see people buying them all the time. But I never really wanted to buy any because I'm not a big popcorn eater. But then I thought today, I thought, you know, I was thinking about watching movies with my friend Linda, like I said, who might come over this weekend to watch movies. And I thought, oh my gosh, I could take off that popcorn part or cover it with something and then just, um, just, you know, put our names on it or whatever and use it for our snacks. Like I said, if I opened a big bag of chips instead of going and getting some bowls out of the kitchen or us both just fighting over the bag, <laughs> we can each have our own little snack container. Okay, so that one I'm doing a little faster than the other one, so I don't know if it's going to come off as well, but we'll see. And I'm kind of, I don't know if it's my hands are dirty or what, but I'm dirtying up the rest of this in, but that's okay. We can wipe it down later. I have my handy dandy wipies. Use for everything. Okay. Let's see. That has paint on it, so that's not helping. Um, let's get a let's get a fresh wipe. And again, everything from the dollar store. These wipes are from the Dollar Tree, you guys. <sighs> for your hands and little projects like this. Sometimes I use them to wipe down my desk, too. Okay, so that's good enough for me. That's going to cover enough. That's erased enough where it's not going to show anything through when I put the things on. So then what I did was I used sticker letters on one of these, but then the sticker letters started coming up a little bit. So I made a photocopy on this one of the sticker letters. Um, on my copy machine, my printer, um, and, uh, what was I going to say? It was a much smoother surface, and I don't have to worry about those letters coming up now, but, yeah, and then I was playing with my new markers to do these, um, but, yeah, so this one, the letters coming up, I need to go over that with Mod Podge again, but what I did, I'll show you, 
I was playing with my new markers. Where are we at? 19 minutes? That's not too bad. I got these at Walmart. I want to say around 10 to 15 dollars at the most. Not too bad. They're by Crayola. They are called, I took the tag off, uh, Crayola Signature Blending Markers. They all look like a paintbrush tip and they blend really well together and it comes with two clear blenders. So this is just like a marker. It has ink in it, but it's clear. So it's almost like water, like watercolor markers and you just blend with those and it comes with two of those and let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen 12, 13, 14, 14 colors, including black, and then two clear blenders. So I was playing with these to make, um, let's see, like I, like for Linda's, I did, I did red, purple, dark purple, light purple, and then this peachy pink color. So you can see, the photocopy didn't totally do it justice, so I'm going to go over it again with these little blender markers and just show you how it brightens it up. And I'm going around the black lettering because I did try to go over one of them with the black marker. It was way too thick and because it's a blendy marker it bled a little bit and the letters just came out too thick and I didn't like it at all. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to go around the black printing here and let that pop out okay so let's see okay so that's one color that's the red see how it's popping out already really nicely and since we're doing we're kind of doing two at once I'm going to do two at once so I'll do the red on this one too da, da, da. I don't know I just I hadn't really done any projects that involved coloring or markers in a long time and I had some really crappy markers so they need updating I still need to update my uh, permanent markers I used to have I think I actually have a big set in storage somewhere but I didn't have very many good ones left on me like where I'm living right now and so I, I wanted to buy some more markers and I saw these and I thought oh those look fun so I'm playing with these guys it is what it is is it me or that I don't know if I bumped it or that uh, uh, what do you call it that uh, thing just popped out at me the sandpaper it's late guys I'm tired oh this one's really dark I hope it doesn't make it so dark that we can't see the letters when it dries I don't know. Might have to break out my permanent marker, find a good one, and see if I can lighten it up a little bit. Or maybe the blender will lighten it up. I don't know. We'll see. I'm trying to go around these letters and not color over them at least. But this purple is really dark. I was hoping my printer would just pick up the colors better, but I got it used free off Facebook, off a group. So, you know, it is what it is. Maybe they gave it away because it doesn't print very nicely in color. The black and white, it does great, but for color, it's not picking up the colors as it should. It has more of like a pinkish reddish tone to everything. So, yeah, I ended up having to go back over these marker colored pictures a little bit because they weren't as vibrant in the photocopy as I wanted them to be. So, that's alright. Like I said, it's very calming to color and color, uh, like the adult coloring books or something. Like I said, I just hadn't had any projects that included markers or coloring in a while, and I thought that would be fun, so that's why I got these. So, let's see. I'm going to blend right over the other one. It's starting to look a little blendy. I like that look. And it's starting to show the layers a little better as it dries, so that's good. Hopefully it's not going to totally be where you can't see her name and stuff. Okay, let's see. 
there's that one and I did do a perfect circle at first and then some of the letters over you know uh, went over the lines of the circle so I thought you know we're just gonna not make it a perfect circle <coughs> since we're doing these bent blendy markers not bendy blendy I figured you know it doesn't have to be a perfect circle it could be like this sort of circle form that these colors are blending out of if that makes sense all right almost done guys they're looking good okay let me see all right Get this last color on there mm -hmm. like i said i'm going over the each color like the edges a little bit so that hopefully it blends one into the other a little bit that's what the idea of these markers is supposed to be anyway you're supposed to be able to blend them into each other and then like I said I'm just playing with these for the first time tonight so I don't really know they don't really come with instructions either but so when I'm done I'm gonna get one of these clear blenders and just go over all the edges a little bit it almost makes like a watermark like watercolors when you do this one but I think that's a cool effect or look anyway so I'm okay with that there let's see if you can see what I mean okay so this is what it looked like colored in and blending them a little bit into each other and then when I used the clear blending brush I blended them even more so I think you can see the difference see the watermarks like I'm talking about you might not like that effect but I kind of liked it I thought that was kind of cool so I'm gonna go over this other one with that same clear blender and see how that looks and I kind of have been if you know this is kind of I'm I don't know I'm OCD but I go over it about five times in the same place or like five strokes one two three four five and then you know move down the line because that's getting the desired f effect I wanted when I was first doing it just a little bit like going over the line like once you didn't really see the blender so I was like no I want to see that watermark I want to see it blended so that's what I've been doing just in case you're wondering and like I said these markers were not too expensive for what you're getting at Walmart they're really nice markers and they're pretty good at blending I like that yeah so I'm gonna go through the middle a little bit too just because there was like this empty water spot and I don't like that okay so those are done they're all blendy <laughs> and I'm gonna like air them out also I'm doing this over a piece of scrap paper drawing paper because they will go through a little bit they do bleed through on this printer paper that I'm using okay so then I'm gonna cut them out and I will show you guys how I put them on the popcorn container and again I bled around the edges so I'm not cutting an even circle I'm cutting them around the edges where it bled if that makes sense so it's going to have very uneven, not a perfect circle edges, but I'm okay with that because that's what I wanted. But if you want to make a perfect circle, do that. And I just measured, I just, when I got these, 
I kind of looked around my desk and I ended up finding some hand sanitizer that was about the same size circle as that middle red circle. So I traced my circles with that and that's how I got the sizing on it if you're wondering on that. I did fail to mention that. So see there you go. I cut it out. Not a perfect circle, but I like it. I'm going to cut this one out. Do the same thing fairly quickly here. This video is getting a little longer than I wanted it to be. But that's okay. We're just playing and messing around. Just showing you guys some stuff and ways to antique and farmhouse and distress your frames and wooden projects and ways to think outside the box and do something fun with these little popcorn containers okay so now i had another brush i think it was that one actually i'm using the mod podge from dollar tree in the gloss luster the glossy one because I didn't care if it had a glossy look. I thought that would be nice. You can use the matte one if you don't want a glossy look, though. <coughs> and all I did was dip my paintbrush in there. And I kind of blotted it on around the circle. You know, just paint it on, but also blot it on. Because you want to be generous with the Mod Podge for right now. And blot it on the edges of that ribbon. The ribbon does need to go, you can do the sanding and all that first and then put the ribbon on, but the ribbon does need to go on before your little circle picture and you'll see why in a minute because the circle picture is going to cover the edges of the ribbon. So it's kind of under it. So I could have just done the ribbon all the way around and glued the picture over it entirely, but I don't know, I didn't want to do it that way, so that's fine. So then we got a generous amount of Mod Podge on there going to take the circle, line it up where I want it to be, push it down, and it'll move on you a little bit. That's okay. Just move it where you want it to be and push down around the edges. So the Mod Podge will squeak out around the edges, but squeeze out, but <laughs> I don't know why I said squeak out, but that's okay. Then I took my brush, the Mod Podge, and painted over the little colored picture, the little label. And I got these weird lines like that. I didn't like that. So I just took my finger and rubbed it in circles so it smoothed out very carefully. And then I'm going to leave that to dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to work on the other one. I'm going to do the other side the same way. And then I might go over the whole ribbon with Mod Podge just so if we get something on these, they won't be dishwasher safe or maybe even safe to like totally throw in your dishpan, but you could easily wipe them off with a wet rag or a soapy rag. And if there's Mod Podge on the ribbon, it will protect them a little bit and make them a little easier to wipe down. So that's nice. All right, I'll put that one on there. Squish it all around on the edges, squeeze some of that out, and also just moving it with my finger to get it exactly where I want it. Oops, got stuck to my finger. That's not good. Okay, <clears throat> come on. There you go. All right. Okay, then get the Mod Podge and go over the top like I did the other one. Okay, like that, and a little circular motion, okay, and then like I said, I will be going over my ribbon as well, but you guys don't need to see that part, just know that you can go over your ribbon with Mod Podge too, and like I said, this is pretty much how it looks when it's dry. See, it says Kai Snacks, and that one's going to say Linda Snacks. And then we have our own little snack containers. How fun is that? Okay, so what have we learned? Think outside the box. Um, some good browns and antique whites to uh, use for distressing and making that farmhouse look. And I think that's about it.
<laughs> I will have another Dollar Tree haul coming up for you guys hopefully tomorrow and Monday hopefully some new uh, DIYs some Easter DIYs um, so yeah all right thanks for watching I really appreciate you guys and uh, like I said um, Hit that like button. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought. I love your feedback and it helps YouTube notice me a little bit more. And if you'd like to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And if no one's told you today, you are enough. You are amazing. You are important. And I, for one, am glad you're here. Thank you and happy crafting. Good night.